How's it going, everybody? This is Bronco Juggalo, and welcome to the week of Wild Eye. Uh, today is Sunday, and I am going to be doing a Wild Eye video every day for the next seven days up through Saturday. And I am starting with the 2012 film Killing Brook. Released by Wild Eye in 2015, directed by David Zagorski, starring Alex Cadell as Brooke and Colin Allen as Vance. Our story is that two recently married women, Chloe and Brooke, are going off on their honeymoon. They meet up with a drifter named Vance, and after a night of partying and debauchery, they, uh, I like that word, debauchery. They offer to give him a ride, and it turns out he is a serial killer. And he kills Chloe, and he starts chasing Brooke through the woods. Brooke winds up at the house of a family who she tries to take refuge from Vance from. Well, it turns out that the family is even more crazy than Vance. They are a bunch of inbred redneck psychopathic killers now this movie was made on a five thousand dollar budget and it does rely quite a bit heavily on things like the texas chainsaw massacre you can definitely see where it takes a lot of influence from there and honestly when the movie first started i really wasn't too into it i could already feel the tcm vibes i was like okay this is just going to be a tcm ripoff however I'm glad I stuck with it because this movie is really good. I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, as I said, it was made for $5,000, so you're not going to get perfection. You're not going to get Hollywood-esque, perfect-looking, you know, great film out of this movie. But they did a great job with what they have. And the first thing I want to talk about that I really enjoyed was the acting. I think that a lot of the actors in this movie did a really good job. Now, there's a couple parts here and there where some of the acting isn't so great, but I definitely have to give a big shout-out to Colin Allen, who I think does an amazing job as the psychopath Vince. Um, not only is he really... I think he's really good at playing a psycho. He's fun, and he's funny, and I really like that. And I think he has some very interesting, funny moments, and I think his dialogue is pretty good. And I'm not sure if he ad-libbed it, but he definitely made this role his own. One thing about this movie is there is a bit of sex in it, but there is no nudity. Uh, the girls are clothed by at least their underwear throughout the whole thing. Um, I thought that was a bit interesting, being a, uh, not only a film from Wale, because... A lot of Wild Eye films do have quite a bit of uh, nudity and, you know, things like that. But I did find that a bit interesting, and I thought it was okay because it didn't take away anything out of this film. One of the members of the family is named Rory, and I'm going back to the acting here. I know I kind of got off on a little something different. But one of the uh, main members of the family is named Rory, and he's mentally challenged. I mean, he, they are inbreds after all. But... I think they do a good job with Rory. Um, I thought he was going to be kind of like the Leatherface ripoff, but I think the actor does a really good job playing him. He is a good physical actor. Doesn't do a lot of... Sp Actually, I don't think he speaks at all in the movie. He makes some sounds, but he doesn't speak. But physically, the guy is a really good actor, and he does a lot of really good stuff, and he really portrays that presence, and I think it's really, really decent. I really enjoy it. Uh, my next pro is the gore in this film. Now, at the beginning of the movie, I didn't think it looked all that great. It's definitely practical effects, not CGI, so that's a plus. But, like, you could tell on the first couple throat slits in the film, you could see where, like, the putty was and where the, you know, where, where, where they had made it and they had tapped it down onto the skin. Um... At first, I wasn't too impressed, but then as we got farther along in the film, I really started to like the gore we were getting, especially when, um, oh, what is her name? I just forgot her name. The female member of the crazy family, 
rips out Vance's throat with her, or the side of his throat with her teeth. I thought that looked really good. Um, a really good bit of, I, I don't know if I want to call it gore, but a really good, yeah, it's gory, I guess, in a way. Kind of a disturbing scene as well. Is She decides she wants her nails done. She's never had her nails done like them fancy city folk. And so they put Brooke's hand in a vise and they start pulling her nails off with pliers one at a time. And it's really gross looking and it's like, you know, if you're one of those people where finger scraping on a chalkboard bothers you, this probably would too. In fact, just watching it gave me a tiny little bit of a shiver up my spine just because I know what it feels like to have your nail ripped off and it hurts like hell. And it just made me shiver just a little bit watching that. Really like that this movie is basically about killers killing killers. Now, Vance does not team up with the deranged family, as you'd think they might have done. He comes along, and they actually end up going at each other. And it's really cool, and I really enjoy it a lot. Towards the end of the film... Uh, one of the uh, deranged family members, he's got a chainsaw and he's wearing his goggles and he looks pretty cool. It's, this is actually a misleading case because this picture here where you see him with the chainsaw, that should actually be Vance hiding behind the tree without a knife. Um, they put Brooke there probably because it's her movie, but in the movie it is Vance that's hiding there. Um, I really like that part too because in the movie Vance is like and he says it too and it's a really funny line he's like this is fucked up why am I running from this guy I'm the one that usually does the chasing and then the guy revs the chainsaw he's like oh yeah that's why <laughs> and I thought that was really funny and I really enjoyed that part speaking of which once again Wild Eye does an amazing job on the covers this is just really nice looking Segwaying off of that, there are some funny moments in this film, and you wouldn't think that there would be. It's not a funny movie, it's not a horror comedy, and it doesn't have a comedic tone. But every once in a while, and it, mostly it all comes from Vance, there's just this little, he'll do something, or he'll just say a little quip or a little one-liner that just strikes me as funny, and I just thought it was really cool. And I really enjoyed that, and it helped to liven up the tension of what this movie was bringing. Now, this movie starts with the brutality pretty much right away. Uh, there is no front title card for it. It just jumps right into it, at least at the very beginning. There's no lead-up. There was no opening. Uh, you know, usually in movies you see, like, the studio's brand logos and stuff before the film starts? There was none of that in this. It jumped right into the film, and it jumped right into a pretty brutal scene. And I was sitting there thinking right then and there, I was like, huh. I don't know, maybe it's just because I didn't expect that. I thought it was a little weird and I kind of didn't like it. But it really did set the tone for this film. And it really did set the tone for this is going to be one of those movies. So when I did get some humor in the film, it kind of came out of left field and it took me by surprise. But it was a welcome addition, in my opinion, and it was very enjoyable. Now that being said, this is not a perfect low-budget film by any stretch of the imagination. I'm sure there will be lots of people out there that don't like this kind of movie. I personally liked it. It was a lot of fun. It was a good film. Uh, I thought the acting was done well. I thought it was written pretty well. I really enjoyed the storyline. I did very much get that Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibe and that uh, I spit on your grave vibe, and you could tell they definitely pulled from some very recognizable movies. But they didn't just copy it. They they may have pulled from it, and I thought that's what I was afraid of. I was afraid it was going to be a copy. But they didn't just copy it, but they did take influence, and I enjoyed that a lot. But as I said, it's not a perfect film, and there are a couple things that I don't like about it. Two things exactly. Well, technically, it's just one thing, but that one thing is the camera work. There are some scenes where the camera work is a little shaky. 
And then there are some other scenes where things kind of blur and they shouldn't. Um, there's a scene right at the very end of the movie where Brooke is screaming. And all of a sudden her face blurs out and it shouldn't. And then it comes back into focus and I'm like, okay, you could just tell that that was a mistake. And that should have been something they caught and maybe reshot or, um, you know, maybe use a different daily or something. That's something that should have been caught in my opinion. But honestly, that's the only real negatives I have for this movie is some of the camera work is a little jolty, a little shaky, and sometimes a little blurry. But like I said, it's a low budget film, so there is always a little bit of give and take. Personally, I thought we got a good job with the actors, so I was happy with that. I would rather have good actors and bad camera work than great camera work and terrible actors. But that's just me. Anyways, guys, I want to thank you very much for joining me. I want to thank Wild Eye for being an awesome, awesome company. And I also want to thank Omniscient Esquire, who sent me this copy of this film. So thank you, Wild Eye. Thank you, Ron. And this is Bronco Juggalo saying, I will see you tomorrow with yet another Wild Eye releasing. Peace. I am what I am and that's all that I am. I am what I am, I'm a hooligan. I am what I am and that's all that I am. I am what I am.